All right, number four, high flow rate. So at the bottom of the range, we have the 1050X, which flows about 1,065 cc's per minute at three bar. At the top of the range, we have the 1700X, which flows about 1725 a minute at three bar. And at seven bar, that injector will flow in excess of 2600 cc's per minute. And by the way, all of the X-Series injectors are capable of running at seven bar. And so uh, this one's gonna be a little longer than the rest because it requires more explanation. And uh, I'm gonna try to do this in one cut, <coughs> which is why I'm wearing the old man glasses. It'll make sense later. Um, <clears throat> so let me get going. What we have to consider is not static flow or, or the overall flow rate of the injector, which is what I just described to you. Um, because we know that uh, that's not how we use an injector. You know, if we put an injector in a flow bench and crack it open and say it flows 1,700 cc's per minute, that's not representative of what's going to happen on the engine because on, on the engine we turn it on and off and it's not on all the time, right? <clears throat> and so dynamic flow is key. There are a couple things that, uh, that determine what that dynamic flow is. And the first thing is duty cycle. Uh, there's a lot of information on it. I'm sorry. There's a lot of stuff. I'm going to call it stuff on the internet about duty cycle, uh, but I'm going to give you some information about what's critical to the X-Series injector <clears throat> or what it's capable of. Uh, short story, you can run these injectors to 95% duty cycle all day long. You can run them at 100 if you want. You're not going to hurt them, but at that point you'll be into the upper nonlinear operating range. And if you want to stay within the really happy range of the injector where its response is completely predictable, let me yourself to, you know, 95% duty cycle and, uh, and you'll be good there. So <clears throat> right off the bat, uh, you're going to lose 5% flow because you're only running 95% duty cycle, right? So to put some numbers on it, if I can do this in my head without, uh, without blowing it, uh, at 6,000 RPM, <clears throat> we have a 20 millisecond cycle. Um, and so a 95% duty cycle means that um, for one millisecond, the injector is, is, uh, is turned off, right? And then we have to consider the offset of the injector as well. And if you're not familiar with the terminology, uh, offset or dead time or latency or whatever you want to call it represents an amount of time that the injector is effectively not functioning, okay? And so one millisecond is fairly typical for a high flow injector uh, and for all the X series, uh, at least at three bar it is. And so using that value, um, that millisecond represents 5% of the total available cycle time at 6,000 RPM. So now we've got a 95% duty cycle, right? And another 5% that we lose through injector offset. So our effective duty cycle is only 90%. So if that injector flowed 1,000 cc's per minute, uh, its dynamic flow at 6,000 RPM is gonna be about 900 cc's per minute. In other words, we're limited by the amount of time the injector's uh, uh, turned off not cycled and, and uh, you know, just being lazy, which is what causes the dead time. So the problem gets worse when you try to raise the fuel pressure. So I've mentioned that all the uh, X-Series injectors will run to seven bar. <clears throat> and of course the flow increase is uh, completely predictable using good old uh, Bernoulli's law. Uh, but what we find is that as the pressure goes up, the injector offset increases. Now, the weaker the magnetic field of the injector, the more that offset increases. So going back to our 6,000 RPM example, <clears throat> at three bar, our one millisecond offset or dead time represents 5% of the cycle. Now, as we crank the pressure up, that one millisecond gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and now 5% turns into six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, you know, depending on how bad the injector is. And so one of the things that we went to uh, great lengths to, to protect as we were designing the, uh, the X-Series injectors to make sure that as the pressure went up, the offset stayed uh, in a fairly reasonable range so that the dynamic flow uh, would remain high. And now, I think what I've described to you is pretty easy to understand, uh, but the one thing that may not have occurred to you is that that's at 6,000 RPM, and that's kind of the bottom of the range for a motorsport application. Uh, many engines are running 9, 10, uh, sometimes even higher, um, to help illustrate my point, let's just say you're spinning to 12,000 RPM. I know that most of you aren't, but it makes the math simple. So at 6,000 RPM, we had a, uh, a 20 millisecond cycle. At 12,000 RPM, that's cut in half. We only have 10 milliseconds, okay? And so at three bar, our one millisecond offset time equals
almost 10% of our entire time available to inject fuel. That's quite a bit. And uh, now imagine what happens when you crank the pressure up to try to get more flow, and the injector does flow more, but you start to lose a greater and greater percentage of your available time to inject fuel. And so uh, hopefully that concept is clear, uh, and I don't have to try to throw any numbers at it because it's, it's hard enough for me to even talk to a camera, let alone having to do math in my head, but I think you get the point. And this brings me back to uh, point number one, which was that these injectors were designed and built specifically for motorsport use. Uh, we know the kind of things that you guys are going to do with these injectors because, you know, we work in motorsport. We build cars, we tune cars, we tweak cars. And uh, this was a major, major point during the design of all of these injectors. We knew where you might want to go. We knew that uh, someday you might be running five bar pressure and say, man, I just changed to a better turbo. I got to crank up the pressure. I need some more flow. When you turn up the pressure, we want something useful to happen, particularly if you're running at high RPM. And so that was a major, uh, major design point. And again, it takes it back to, uh, you know, number one, that they were designed specifically for motorsport use. You don't have that option with an injector that's a modified streetcar injector or an off-the-shelf injector. There are no options because you get what you get. And so high dynamic flow uh, is a key selling point of the X-Series injectors. And uh, I think now you see why, the ability to run a high duty cycle and the ability to maintain a low offset value <clears throat> as the pressure goes up. Um, and um, now we get to the point where I need my old man glasses and my notes, because I did say I was gonna try to do this in one cut. So here's the deal. Um, we have uh, more or less taken a survey and paid close attention to what happens with our own vehicles, with our customer vehicles, and we found that on average, an engine running on ethanol will make about two horsepower per liter per hour fuel flow. And so because we know the dynamic flow of all of our injectors uh, at every pressure point, uh, we can make some predictions as to how much power the injectors are capable of making. Now, I want you to understand that this is nothing more than a prediction. Uh, some engines will make more, some engines will make less. This is an average of wheel horsepower based on what we've seen from our customers. We all know that dynos vary, we all know that engines vary, but it's a good rough guideline uh, and it gives you uh, something to work from. So, on with the old man glasses, I'm going to tell you that the 1050X at 3 bar, and by the way all these numbers are on ethanol, uh, if you want to know what they'll do on gasoline, just add 50% to all of them. So back to the 1050 at three bar, um, about 115 horsepower per injector. Uh, the 1300 X2 will do about 140 horsepower per injector. The 1700 X will do about 180 horsepower per injector at three bar. And all these numbers quoted are 9,000 RPM. And just so you know, uh, that does describe the absolute maximum limit of the injector. So we're talking about an average that we got from a number of uh, people and builders and we're also talking about the absolute limit of the injector. So keep that in mind when you try to use these numbers. Uh, now going up to seven bar, this is the good stuff. This is where the injectors really shine because we've taken the time and made the effort to have a, a very strong uh, magnetic field. Uh, the 1050X is seven bar, 9,000 RPM on ethanol, uh, about 170 horsepower per injector, and that's our smallest injector. Uh, the 1300X2 is good for about 210 horsepower per injector. Uh, the 1700X at 7 bar, about 265 horsepower per injector on ethanol. Again, i got to give you the warning or the disclaimer because somebody's going to call and yell at me and say, I, I tried that and it didn't work and you're a beep, 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 beep. But anyway, um, it's based on an average uh, and it represents the absolute maximum ability of the fuel injector. Uh, but it is useful because it's based on empirical data and so it's something that you can uh, put to good use in, in uh, trying to determine what the injectors are capable of and you can also use our uh, injector calculator uh, on the website which is based on airflow which we're able to predict fairly accurately um, and I think that's it for high flow uh, high dynamic flow and I think in spite of wearing these silly glasses and having to use my notes I think I made it through in one cut so uh, I'm going to go pat myself on the back, maybe drink another Red Bull, and uh, prepare for number five.